welcome to qa testing training.com so today yesterday we were talking about how to identify elements on internet explorer and we have started with firefox but today uh, we did not get an opportunity uh, yesterday we did not get an opportunity to complete the firefox so let's start with firefox and then move to chrome and then we'll start with expands so as we were discussing it today to identify element in firefox first of all we need an add on called firefox so yesterday we understood how firebug looks and how elements are identified just i will give you the brief introduction again on this so remember that firebug version differs for each browser version of firefox for example if you are going with 1.9 1.9 works for firefox 10 to 15 If you are going with Fire uh, Fire uh, Firefox 1.7, it works below 1. Firefox 10. So we should make sure that whatever the Firebug that we are installing is compatible with the present version of Firefox that we are having in our computer. So, so this is similar to IE Developer Toolbar, but uh, it has some extra features compared to IE Developer. now select the pointer available on the firebug and click on any text box so once you select the text box immediately a blue colored region will be highlighted on the html tags available on the firebug so this particular tag is representing that particular text box its features like what would be the height what would be the width what would be the id name class name what should be the color etc all the things defined by the developer will be highlighted in the tag so here id equal to full name then we have name equal to full name we don't have class name so as discussed the first preference always goes to id second preference name third preference goes to class name then comes the x part so we have an id defined so copy the value and check whether this value is unique for id attribute throughout the web page to do that we need to place the cursor at the starting html tag so i am placing the cursor at the starting html tag which will cover the total web page so and once i place the value it will directly go to the first search criteria first uh, where, where this value is present and it it found a particular tag called input tag and input tag which it found is highlighting the full name text box on the web page so once i place the cursor on the tag the particular text box is getting highlighted this means this particular value full name with the attribute id if you see here id is getting searched for the first time but we cannot confirm that this is the only text box that is defined with this value full name we should cross verify whether it is moving to any other tag in the firebug so just click on next button available on the firebug once you place the cursor on the text box you will see this pop up previous and next so when you click it is not moving out of this particular tag this tag is uh, highlighting the full name text box that means this particular value is uniquely identifying the full name text box this is how we identify the elements on firefox so guys do you have any doubt uh related to identifying the web elements on firebug so sure list the order of web elements web elements or identification of web elements uh, surendra 
So the Surinder's question is, can you list the order of web elements? What takes a maximum priority? Oh, okay. So let me take notepad and from notepad I will answer. So always, it is not mandatory, but always take this preference. The reason is the developers first give the preference to ID. Then they define a class. Then they define a class name. This is the reason we take the first preference as ID, next preference as name, third preference as class name, then XPath. XPath is a different concept which developers don't define. We define ourselves. How to write an XPath? This is a very important concept. I will take it. Okay. So now we are only talking about ID, name, class name. So ID, name, and class name are defined by the developers. So always the priority goes in ID, first preference, name, second preference, class name, third preference, expire, next preference. So any other doubt? Shall I go ahead with other concepts? Before I go with Chrome, let me also show you on checkbox. So if you see this checkbox, checkbox has a type and tab index and name. So this particular tag doesn't have an ID or class name. It has only name. So we need to check whether this value accept is uniquely identified on this web page. So I'm placing the value over here and I am trying to place the cursor at the starting HTML tag to verify whether this value is uniquely identified, identifies with the attribute name equal to accept. So click on next. Here we are getting a tag called div equal to I accept rval which is not accept. We have this value accept should be unique but not the total, it should contain accept. So we can ignore this particular tag. Now let's go to the next tag. So here we got another tag called input tag. When we place the cursor, it is highlighting the checkbox which we want to identify. So again we have some more tags below. So we should confirm whether this particular value is available anywhere else after this tag also. So once again, I'm clicking on next. So I'm getting another tag, but the tag is of ID attribute and the value is also not a accept. It's accept R val. As discussed yesterday, if it is accept with ID, we can consider that tag. The tag will not affect identification of web element because we are trying to identify the element with name attribute. Name attribute should not have the same value within the web page. But other attributes, name, ID or class name can have the same value because when Selenium is identifying the web element, it will check for the name attribute but not for the ID or class name because we have specified it as name. So now, once again, I click on next. So it's not going beyond that. That means this particular value accept defined for the attribute name identifies this particular checkbox uniquely. So shall I go ahead with the next browser Chrome? If you have any doubts, you can ping me or can speak out from the mic. If you, get, if you guys give me the permission, Chrome.
Okay, then I am taking it as granted and going with Chrome now. So, how do you identify elements on Chrome? On IE, we use IE developer toolbar. For Firefox, we use Firebug. For Chrome, we have an add on. Yeah, Rajini has a question like, how can I ask question? You can uh, ask question through a mic. I am going with Chrome. So on Chrome, how do I identify elements? So Chrome comes with an add-on called Firebug Lite. This is an add-on which we need to download for our Google Chrome. So, Firebug for Chrome, and you could see Firebug Lite for Google Chrome. This is what you need to. Click on a uh, add for the firebug. So once you add it, when you click, when you click on F12, the firebug uh, Chrome comes inbuilt firebug. So we just need to close that inbuilt firebug, and here you can see the Chrome version of firebug. And here you don't have a pointer but you have a inspect element to identify the element on a given web page whenever you place the cursor once again it will try to identify the element using the pointer so once again i'm just opening the web application just to show you how does this work. I'm just going to another page in this. So I have opened the firebug. So I am trying to identify one element over here Just see here, I am trying to identify the date box. And if you see the date text box has a name defined, ID defined. So I will check whether this value is unique or not. So, but to for us in Firebug Lite, we don't have any search box. The only thing that we can do is we can identify whether this ID or name is unique or not using XPath. Or else we need to verify this element on Firefox and then uh, use the same on Chrome. Mostly 95% to 98% you will not see any differences on Firefox or Chrome. But there, there will be difference, 4 to 5% of differences on Internet Explorer and uh, compared to Firefox and Chrome because uh, developers define some specific things for Internet Explorer compared to Firefox and Chrome because Internet Explorer is totally a different browser compared with these two browsers. 
So, any doubts till now? Identification of web elements using ID, name, or class name. How do I identify an element where I do not have an ID or name or class name defined or the element ID or name or class names are duplicated within the given web page. So now let me go to Chrome but all five this XPath cannot be identified on Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer does not come up with any add-on. Any element if you are, want to identify an Internet Explorer, you need to identify using Firefox, then use that XPath for Internet Explorer also. There are very little chances, that is 5% of chances that that particular XPath may fail. But when we write an XPath manually, How much computer RAM? Uh, Surendra, because we are on, we are on uh, like we are using this uh, screen sharing and all those things, uh, a minimum RAM of 2 GB is required uh, because uh, when uh, the screen sharing and all those takes high bandwidth and high memory. So uh, we need a high RAM, at least the 2 GB RAM will help and make sure that no other applications are open on your computer. But when we are starting the real implementation, we need to have Eclipse open on everyone's desktop and always and also uh, Eclipse and Fire, uh, the browser should be open. At that time, the uh, memory usage and the RAM, everything will be high. So at that time, uh, you may be facing issues. So I will give you uh, the list of things that are that are needed in your computers. I will send an email to your uh, personal email IDs so that we can install those things. I will also explain you the installation procedure 